I wake up, she be blowing me. I'm blocking all my ass. Getting tapping on the e way, man. I damn it, miss my ass. I can get my bitches anything. I get them all, we'll get it. He be tough for you. He come around us, he be scared. I'm a gangsta. Take out my block, I'm like my daddy. I ain't gon' lie. Surrounded by some killers, I can't gon' lie. I ain't gon' lie. Fighting a murder with a public defender, you better not try. I need a trap a bitch. I ain't trying to trap a bitch. Running her mouth for shit. She getting her back with Chanel. She brought some sneakers, ain't even had an extra bitch. Down bad, broke, round millionaires. Never asked for shit. It's fuck buddy, drug buddy, that's my bitch. Get for a half. You gotta be a little bit more excited about some shit. I ain't sauce. I ain't sauce. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, you gotta be a little bit more turned up about your shit, man. Yeah, this, I'm talking about, yeah, man. Listen, I mean, man. Listen, we heard it before, y'all. I'm gonna just say that, man. That's that take key featuring Gunner and Dirk Likes all. Listen, man, that's that serious shit. But right now, you're now tuned into me, 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 million dollars worth of game. Yes, sir. And, you know, I do, I do a little beats too myself. I do a little sampling. Take key, fuck these niggas. Yeah, yeah. Take yeah. Key. Oh, why you stopping my shit? Oh, man. That was the song I, I fucked made, Fuck that boy old joint up. Mixing. No, he was feeling that shit. He trying to see. He want that sample. He, he might take my sample. Blend. He, he don't want that fucking blend. That was, that was a nasty blend, man. That was a nice blend, man. That was an NB, man. I ain't talking about new balances, man. That was a nasty blend, man. Listen, today we got my man up here. Y'all been hearing for, you know, for years. Take he fucked this shit up, right? Listen, straight out of South Memphis, man. It's going down, man. He right here, man, came Philly, Million Dollars River Game. He said, we got to sit down. We got to chop it up. We got to talk about this business. We got to talk about these. We just got to talk about the game, man. It's about a game. And everybody got a different game. One game one game that he mastered. He Listen, he mastered this producer game. He ain't no beat maker. He a producer. Mm. I'm talking about this some producing shit right here going mm. down. Now, I'll tell you, I'm going to get straight to it, man. Take key. Fuck that shit. Who the fuck is that, man? That was my boy Lil Juice. You know what I'm saying? So, Lil Juice. I had, I, I think I had tweeted this shit like 2016. He ended up uh, being one of the niggas like, hey, I got a tag for you, bro. Just fuck me on some beats. I'm like, all right, say, so listen, I got you. I'm going to fuck with you. He ended up sending me a tag. I'm like, me at the time, I'm like, I wasn't fucking with the one he sent me. I'm like, reset it this way. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to add some shit to it, but just do it this way. So he ended up doing it. And I, I started using it on some beats, right? So, um, I fuck with him on some beats, but I started using it on my own beats, like separate, and I end up using it on um, shoot. So with Block Boy shoot. JB, so when when I used it on on shoot, I started we started seeing like the the trend of it. You know what I'm saying? Me and Bam just started seeing motherfuckers fucking with. Oh, we like that new tag. You know what I'm saying? Like who is that? Who is that young nigga type shit? So we just kept using it, kept sticking with it. Then we just you know what I'm saying? Eventually like. Just knew it was gonna be one of them monumental moments we using that motherfucker. Now, all we have from all of, from from when shoot came all the way up to now. Why did you keep the tag? Because a lot of people, some some producers don't use the tags. You know, yeah. some, some. Why did you keep using your tag? I mean, it, it 
it wasn't it wasn't a thing like I I just intentionally kept using it. It just was or kept it. You feel me? It just was a thing like all right, I I didn't made these beats, nigga, three years ago. A nigga might rap on that beat. You feel me with this tag in 2022. You feel me? A, a beat that I didn't made in 2019, 2018, 2019. It was like I make beats with no tags. I make all types of different shit. You feel me? So if a nigga rap on an old ass beat, you know the tag on that motherfucker. What I look like? Like nah, bro, don't take the tag out. Like you feel me? I just let him, you know, let it ride. Let it say. Now you, you know, you didn't produce for everybody from Travis to Beyonce, Migos, yeah. Baby, uh, Trap. I'm talking about a uh, Drake. Everybody like, who the people you was in that studio when you was like, damn, they ain't playing no fucking games. Like they ain't playing no games. Now you you gonna like, put me on the spot? I had to because anybody don't baby. come in there like hold that. On, hold on, before you answer that, this episode of Man I Was Worth a Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Now today. We gonna do a little something different. New Amsterdam Vodka is introducing Wild Card. You hear me? Look at that. Eight ounce can, the first canned beverage that New Amsterdam Vodka has ever distributed. It's right here, Wild Card, and it's made with real vodka. We not playing no games, okay? There's not no artificial shit going on. No, this is made with real vodka, and it come in three flavors. Original Hard Lemonade, Classic hard punch in this right here. Lemon hard tea. Yeah, look at it. Eight ounces. Look at it. Real vodka. Look at it. Wild card. When you out and about, wherever you at at your local liquor store or wherever they sell New Amsterdam vodka, make sure you pick you up some. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Try all three flavors. Give all three flavors a try. Figure out which one you like the best. This right here is the... Lemon hard tea. I think I'm about to crack this open and see what it's about. Right now, let's get back to that that answer. Uh, uh, when he was in the studio, yeah, with all of these greats that you work with, Beyonce and Travis and Dirk and uh, like who Pooh came Shiesty. in there? Who Shiesty, Free Poo too? Who came in there? Free Pooh Shiesty. And, who yeah. came in there and put that work in and had you? Let's put the table a little closer. My fault. Who came in there and and you know had you fucked up? Like you know because everybody worked different, you know. But some people, you know, they come in there and they just like, oh shit, this yeah. motherfucker's the, like, he's an animal. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna really even just say one person. Yeah, I, I can't say one person because niggas don't feel some type of you know what I'm saying. No, but I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you like this. My brother, Block Boy JB, we've been working. From nigga twenty ten years now, you feel me? So from from him to to be recording in the closet, starting off recording in the motherfucking closet and make a hit out the closet, you know what I'm saying? Off of a off a trial version of mixed craft, the program mixed craft on a beat I just cooked up for him, you know what I'm saying? That that speak a hell of value, you know what I'm saying? Niggas mm-hmm. not doing that shit. And you know, it's it's like from that point on, like even today when we working, you know, we might fuck off in the studio bullshit, waste a little time, but we going to record some music, you feel me? We going to make some hits. We going to do something. We going we gonna to make, you know what I'm saying, make some motion happen for sure. Absolutely. And we just, we just got that chemistry, you know what I'm saying? We've been working so fucking long, and it, and it, and it, and it, come, it come firsthand. It's natural, you know what I'm saying? Now, if, if, if I'm coming up, I'm, I'm doing my music thing, and I need one of them take heat beats. Yeah. What that shit going to run me, man? You know, I mean, you know, they be like arm in the leg, real arm leg. God damn! Nah, I fuck with niggas though. You know, cause it, cause it, cause you know, it, I look at it like times change. You feel me? It's new generations. It's new waves. It's new. It's new. It's new producers every day. You know what I'm saying? If a nigga be stuck in his ways, uh, gatekeeping and on some nut hole shit, you you know what I'm saying? You you'll get washed up. So me personally, I always fuck with the new and upcoming wave. So all the all the young niggas who who rapping from Memphis. I didn't fuck with them, you know what I'm saying? Or I'm fucking with them, and they'll tell you that they self. You know, I'm tapped in in the city with all the young niggas who coming up, and all the niggas who didn't blew up after me, you know. So, um, when it come, when it come to when it come to just like pricing with a beat, I can't really say. You feel me? It, it's it's one off a relationship. Mm-hmm. If it's my nigga, I ain't you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna bust him up. You feel me? If it's <laughs> if it's a uh. A label, you know, of course, you know, label had different budgets and shit. It might, it might be a little bit higher, but 
when it when it when it be like a, a new artist who got my beat from this this A and R and they didn't you know what I'm saying trying to not give me what I want on it and all this shit you know of, of course I might feel disrespected I'm gonna charge them the strength you know what I'm saying like I'm gonna don't come with no small bag thinking like you feel me like after you didn't been been basically disrespectful that I ain't gonna bust y'all look right now coming from South Memphis right. you know. What's the feeling out there after you know what happened to Young Dolph? You know, is it is they 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 slowly recovering out there? I mean, you uh, you, you know, my mama passed two days before Dolph passed. You know what I'm saying? Right, so I, hear that, man. I I really Dolph. felt this shit. You know, I ain't never speak on it, but it's like it it was just like one of those moments where, you know, I I feel like, you know, it was just it was just like, and when it came to Memphis for me, it just felt like. I don't know. I I can't even explain the feeling. It was just fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, damn, my mama fucked. My mama fucked up. She didn't. You know what I'm saying? Like she been sick the past seven years. You know what I'm saying? She going through. She got cancer and she going through uh, mental issues. You know, so me and my auntie basically, and I don't even speak on it, but me and my auntie basically had to um, fight for the the rights conservatorship over my mama. You know what I'm saying? Like. Mm -hmm. To get her help and all that type of shit. So, you know, every time I went to Memphis, it was it was one of them things like, damn, you know, it just was a cloud over my head. You feel me? Mm -hmm. It was like, damn, when that when that shit hit me, and and the, the dog shit, it was like, damn, I ain't really just know how to deal with it. You feel me? Yeah, that's deep. One thing I noticed is like in this in this game, you got Atlanta fucking shit up. Yeah, but Memphis fucking shit up too. Yeah, like like it, it's like it's so many stars in Memphis, man. There's so many hit records that came out of Memphis, man. It's like, man, what is it down there? Like like what, what, you know, what is it that everybody... Shout out to the originators of that Memphis yeah. shit, Eight Ball and MJG. Man. Yeah, shout out to Eight, eight Ball yeah. MJG. Legends. You know what I mean, so, they, so. they was Tony Draper and shit. They were some of the first ones I that I know to really put Memphis on the map. Then like, Three Six you know came and all that. Juicy J, DJ yeah, Paul, Lord shit. Infamous. Yeah, shout out to all the Gangsta legends, Boo. man. Because because as youngins, man, y'all can never forget that by them opening the door for Memphis, it made it easier for y'all to be able to, exactly. you know what and, I mean? And, and, and also the niggas who didn't make it out the city, who had a big influence on like the who? city. Right. Like Player Fly. For sure, niggas forget about Fly. Niggas forget that. Nigga, your dad and your auntie, your grandma and them were bumping fly. You feel me? Everybody was running to this shit. Like, still know this shit to this day. Word for word, player fly. Like, niggas don't get him the respect he needs. Shout out to player fly. Shout out to him. Because even him, he might have never made it big up out of Memphis, but he influenced a lot of young motherfuckers in Memphis to understand that I, 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 I want motherfuckers to sing my shit like they sing fly shit. Exactly. You feel what I'm saying? And then some young nigga came through and took that shit to a different level where they started singing this shit outside of Memphis. And that's how it all started. It's called motivation. Thanks. Without a doubt. Now, when you in that stew, right? Yeah. What is the what is the keys, man? What is the ingredients to making a hit record? Is it is really the vibe. You know, when you get in the studio with niggas, you gotta peep the vibe. You gotta know, like and when I when I say vibe, this for the producers out there, like if, if you're not used to going to the studio with niggas, then just watch, sit back and watch how niggas move each studio session you in, you know, because you could be coming in and thinking, oh, I'm finna play this nigga this shit. Whole time, he wants your shit. You feel me? Like, I might get in the studio with a nigga and he, I'm thinking like, I'm, bro, I'd have cooked up some beats, so I'm finna cook up some beats of his vibe or what type of music he make. The whole time, he might be in a mode where, Man, I got Take Heat coming up to the studio. I got Woop the Woop coming up. This young nigga, I know what type of beats he make. Guess what? I'm a, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm in that type of vibe. So when it come when it come to the to the studio, first thing is knowing what the vibe is and what the art is on. Don't be on no too much ego shit thinking you know what, you know what I'm saying, you doing. Of course you 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 have confidence in your music and, and your beats when you actually, you know what I'm saying, construction constructing it and Producing it hands on with the artist, but like as far as like like the the vibe or whatever a nigga on, you gotta know what type of shit he on. Right, because a lot of time when artists call you in, they calling you in for a reason because they exactly. trying to get a different sound exactly. than what they already got. 
You know what I mean? And they know you for doing a certain sound, bringing a certain bounce, bringing a certain knock. But then you go there as a producer thinking, you going to make some music for him. And it's like, no, no, no. I want what you do. I, I want I want I want I want that knock that you gave such and such and I exactly. want that knock that you gave this person. Yeah. I don't want you to come in and do no shit that you think is yeah. personally for me. No, no, do what you do good. So a lot of times I understand what you're saying to break it down in a in a different type of way for right. the people who might ain't really catch everything he's saying. When you go there, be you. Do do you. Don't be looking for no certain type of sound. Don't just play your hot fucking records. Exactly. Hot beats is yeah. hot beats. Who the artists that go in there and knock four or five songs out, man? Like it ain't nothing. Who, who them artists? Man, shit. Like who would just go in the studio off the rip? And just knock like five songs out, man. Cause you got people that, like you said, everybody vibe is different. Some people might just want to listen, man, all yeah. night and just catch something. And then some motherfuckers just come in there and go crazy. Who go in there and just snap the fuck out? See, that, that's the thing, see, yeah. I ain't, I ain't the type of nigga that just, Say one nigga name or a couple no, niggas name, cause, 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 cause the thing is a nigga feels some type of way, and I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so, so it's like when it comes to actually describing uh, studio scenarios and shit, I kind of avoid that on a simple fact. It's like I fuck with a lot of niggas, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like in, in the music, you know, industry. So it's like I don't want nigga to feel disrespect. He watching this shit, like. I ain't take keep forgot to say a nigga nine whole time. I'm shit. just in a moment, just not thinking. Uh, you feel me? Mm -hmm. It was like I ain't the type of nigga to just want to like discredit a nigga or disrespect a nigga in a way where he feel like I ain't want to say his name or something so well you, know you ain't got to say nothing I'm going to just mention some names and you can just say you know yeah. motherfucker uh, you know they they go in there and make a bunch of songs Future yeah 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 he go in then they go in but oh, Travis we, yeah he go in he go in so every time I like when I work when I have worked with them like hands on it's been you know what I'm saying did like so, just, just knocking them songs out yeah like in in in, in when somebody in there and they doing anything outside of doing a beat do you help write do you do any of that shit with anybody do you go in and like on the aspect of like give advice to like like as a producer like you know yeah i know well, I, got, I i stay in my line so okay when you when you saying like a nigga a nigga go in the studio with a nigga he might be on, he might, he might got some personal shit going on. He might just got it to with his baby mama. He might have just, you know what I'm saying, some shit that came up in the streets with him. So it's like, it's like me, I come to the studio, I do what I do. We vibe, we we chop it up, if anything. But when it comes to like constructive criticism and being more hands-on, you just gotta know what artists you can do it with, what artists you can't do it with. Okay, so I'm a, you know? now getting into this game, producer game, right? Right. Cause you serious about it. how old was you when you got in the game and who influenced you? Had to be like, like 14, 15, 14, some shit like that. But what's the first two? What's the first thing you was working? What's the first equipment you was doing your beats on? I had, I had, I had an HP computer. You know what I'm saying? Then I ended up buying a, I bought a laptop from the pawn shop, forty dollars. It was at this pawn shop called Easy Pawn. I never forget. Forty dollars. Forty dollars. Bought a laptop, forty dollars. It was uh. It was an e machines laptop, so I bought that motherfucker. That was like I had to be like I want to say fifteen. Then, then I end up uh, shit. I end up buying like a like a like a little piano. Well, I ain't buying. My mama got me like a little piano. I know you little little small joints. No, it was a big joint. Oh, it was a big one. I ain't never used it though. What <laughs> crazy is, we were, it was I would. Cause I had moved with my dad and shit, and um, some shit happened. And they shot the house up early in the morning. We waking up, we heard gunshots. My stepmom, she in the she in the room yelling and shit. We get up, and it, it ain't nobody get hit though. You feel me? It was just like bullet holes and shit in the house. You was the reason they shot. The nah, house, right? hell no, nah, it wasn't me. Oh. It was nah, but but uh, but back to the point was she said, it wasn't when me. I, Still the bullets, the bullets had went through the house, right? <laughs> but one of them went through the through the uh, my brother door, and my 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 uh, keyboard was in the closet, and the bullet went straight through the keyboard. It didn't hit nothing else in the house, and this was like twenty twelve, you feel me? Twenty thirteen, some shit around there, and it was just kind of like a sign for me, you know? Because I'm like, damn, I ain't never used this keyboard, but they get the they they get to shooting at the house and. 
it wasn't nothing got hit but my keyboard. You know, the windows and shit got busted, but it wasn't nothing hit but my keyboard in the closet. Like, it shit was just ironic as fuck. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, it was on after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I still, I still, don't, I still, up. Shit nah, don't nah, work. Nah, nah, I still don't use that motherfucker. I still don't use. <laughs> I still don't use it, bro. So you went into that now. Who who influenced you though? Like who was somebody who to be who the producers you was looking at? Like yo, damn. Man, shit. I was looking at Metro, of course, Southside, Licks, mm. Luger, Young Chalk. Mm. Mm. You know we go we go to Memphis. So I was looking at DJ Squeaky, Memphis Track Boy. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like just everybody, bro. Like. And and what's crazy is like, I just remember looking at all these niggas like, damn, these niggas is the shit. Like these, you feel me? And it just me being at a point where I'm in my career, not being able to run into these niggas, work with these niggas, like tap in with these niggas, work on some shit with them, like you feel me? And it happened. It happened, bro. I don't, I don't, I be don't, I don't be understanding this shit sometimes. But it's like, I just remember like studying these niggas, like. Looking up to these niggas like, damn. Now you in the same room as Yeah, them. exactly. So You know what I mean? So God is great, man. Hey, you know man. I mean? Keep putting that work in, man. Keep putting that work in because the same, I, I got to give you the youngest the game. The same niggas you look up to, when you get in the same room, up, you can still acknowledge that you looked up to them niggas. See, that's yeah. the humble. I forgot man. Drummer Boy. I forgot Drummer yeah, Boy. Yeah, so, That's Drummer the humbleness. Boy, like, that, was, that was the nigga who, he was the nigga who made it out of Memphis who who was really like a part of the whole trap era, the beginning of it with Gucci. You know what I'm saying? Like all this shit. Like even the Memphis artists he was working with, but like Drummer Boy for sure need to get his flowers. Like right. that nigga, that nigga did so much for the culture. Niggas go back, look, even me, I go back looking at his shit like, damn, Joma did that. I always knew, like, the sound and shit, like, uh -huh. hearing this shit, but it's like, damn, like, he really made this shit. I like, that. Boy, I like sure. the fact that you give niggas they flowers, man, even though you in the same room as them now. You know what I mean? Because a lot of young niggas come up and then they let the arrogance, they let the money, they let the, I'm the nigga right now yeah. to take over the bigger picture. You feel what I'm saying of... So, uh, and you know what I'm saying? So I, I I commend you for just, you know, even putting that out there, the niggas you looked up to, the niggas that you admired, the niggas that you wanted to be like growing up, and now you're in the same room as them. That's what's up. This episode of the Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Two Laws. Manage your music business all in one place with Two Laws. Two Laws is worldwide music distribution for independent artists and labels made easy. I'm talking about this made easy. Two Laws offer unparalleled control over your music catalog. With Two Laws, you can release your music to all major platforms as often as you want, whenever you want. Two Laws also makes collaborating easy. You can seamlessly add payment splits for each release automatically, pay your team and collaborators. Monetize your music in over 200, I'm talking about 200 plus stores and services. Every week, Two Laws will be giving away $100. I'm talking about $100 cash to random new artists who sign up with the link in the YouTube description. Take control of your music at twolaws.com. Two Laws, what are you waiting for? Take control of your music, twolaws.com. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's extremely, you know, like like major. But see, now you got your single coming out, right? Yeah. Well, 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 why did that come about? Why did your own, you know? So uh, we basically had been, you know, just real working real close with with Gunner, and I had been been fucking with Dirk before. Like you know, he just really just blew up. So I used to pull up on Dirk when I was in Atlanta when I first when I first had graduated school. Around the time I graduated college, I had got me a condo in the A. So I used to always pull up on Dirk, you know, and he was still coming up. Then this before he he shit just really uh -huh. just went super crazy. Uh -huh. So uh, Gunner ended up. Fucking with us on on the song, and then we just had the song. We was like, shit, we gotta finish this motherfucker. We gotta add to it, take away whatever we need to do. So I hit Dirk up. He hopped straight on that motherfucker, mm -hmm. finished it ASAP, sent it back. You know, I hit Mike Dean up like, I need you to, you know what I'm saying? Fuck with me, do something to it, whatever you want to do. Like, a okay, did this shit in like two hours, sent it right back. So, so what's what, is the album coming? It's gonna eventually come. I can't, I can't say that 
it's coming, but I'm working on it for sure, for sure. I got some real, I know you got some, some real crazy shit. shit, man. Like, and I, I, I wanted to, like, kind of show, not but not go too far off, but kind of show that I can make shit outside of the ordinary OG sound of Take Keep. What niggas used to hearing that sound, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas need to know I know how to make some shit for real. I feel like I got to, I got to kind of show that with the Beyonce shit. The before I let go, you know, but that, but beyond that, you know, I'm still trying to prove myself, me personally, prove myself to the world that I can do shit outside of, you know what I'm saying, the ordinary, what y'all think of, take key sound. Now, and that's what's going to make you be great. Definitely. Because you always got to, even when you get to your goals, you always got to set more goals. And that's one of your goals right there is to prove to the world that no, nah, I'm bigger than what the sound that y'all got me as. Now this sound got me rich. You know what I mean? This sound got me but this right. next shit gonna get me wealthy. Right. Now so, now when it goes to the O O O G's, like who do you fuck with from back in the day? When you think about uh, you know, some of these people you might know, you might don't yeah, I know you know Dre. Mm -hmm. I know you know Premier. I know you know mm -hmm. motherfuckers like Hank probably Hank Shockley, he like to did public enemy and all that stuff. Do you fuck with any producers? You go back and listen to any of that shit from back that era, like the '80s, the '90s. Is it any stuff that you listen to? Any of them producers that you fuck with? Yeah, but but it's, it's more when you when you say that producers, just because you got to think back in the day, the South and the North were two different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like entities, like yeah. niggas had basically like it shit would divide if you want to. Yeah, for real, but yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah. you know, like me when I'm thinking of producers back in the day, like and, and coming up when I remember, it was it was like it was like the 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 uh, DJ Squeakies. It was yeah. it was like the 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 motherfucking uh, Juicy J's. It was yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying the the Jermaine Dupri's and yeah. shit like Rico that. That's what we were saying. Up. Yeah, like Dallas Austin, all that type shit. Yeah, and so we was. When, when we was coming up, we was younger, we really weren't just too tapped in into, into who was actually making the music until I got older to a point I knew and had a, a insight of what I, what I was looking up. Like, oh, I'm looking up this song from 2001. Who was the producer on it? You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. One thing I see about you, and shout out to, uh, you fuck with our people from Philly, Ryan Press. Yeah, Ryan Press. Shout out Press. to Ryan Press, man, over so, there at Warner, doing his thing, right, publishing. But now, what it, like one thing I see about you, you got your fucking business right. Right. Every time I see you, you you sound you you getting you going to another level on the business side of things when it comes to publishing and protecting yourself. Right. What is some of the game that you would give to that young producer? Because everybody is making beats, they sending beats around. Uh -huh. What are some of the ways that you could protect your productions when you making your, your creations when you making beats? Like like as far as protecting your shit, like bro, like if you gonna if you gonna work with a nigga. Or work with an artist who who big, you feel me? Now in the era where it's everything is streaming, so niggas gonna get paid off your shit regardless. You know, niggas gonna it's gonna niggas ain't putting out no music and they ain't getting paid off of it some way somehow. So if you ain't got no lawyer, that's the first step. Get a lawyer. You know, uh. you gotta have an attorney you trust. Get a manager. You know, if you don't get no manager, build you want start from ground up with a nigga you really fuck with. Like me and my manager did. We started from point zero. Uh -huh. Yeah, man. And Shout just out to him, good dude, man. Bam, right here. You know what I'm saying? And he's still with me. So that show you like when you got a when you got a when you got a manager you can trust and a lawyer. Be, and like you say, you say start from the ground port. Bam ain't no shit at the beginning. He ain't no shit. Bam he was just that like, nigga was doing graphics. He was doing. Do. He was doing <laughs> graphics. He was he was he was doing like some media shit for me and helping me. You know, build my shit. But right. we just kept it going. You know. But so and the third thing I would say is. When you when you doing these when when people when you when you get some type of motion and these people hear you up, making sure you ain't signing on anything, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? That shit will fuck you out, bro. Nigga milk you like a cow, man. I and swear to God. When you say sign anything, what is examples of? It's like uh I like so it's it'll be it'll be people People knowing you got these big songs with artists, right? And they No, before them, you get in there, you know, I'm just talking about like before you even get to the big songs yeah. with artists, when you coming up. Cause you got a lot of dudes out here that got some good shit. They yeah. putting their shit on YouTube. They passing their shit around. They sending their shit to everybody. They every signing Johnny Donut. They sending their shit to every artist DM. We flipping a couple eight balls I mean, every they, week. I so, mean, they uh, emails and shit. So, him. so, so what happened is niggas will find out that this producer has some type of motion, right? And these niggas be from companies where 
they'll they'll come at you like, all right, bro, sign sign to sign this paper or whatever. I give you a small advance, couple thousand dollars, and I'ma collect all your money on YouTube. All the all the shit you got working on YouTube. Just say if you a producer and you just got YouTube beats, you know what I'm saying, or you. Oh, fuck around, got a got a got a song with a with a nigga in the south or something. He and the song got a couple million views. You gonna want to get some money, right? You not thinking like, damn, it's publishing and shit like that involved, right? So you assign these YouTube deals, thinking that they just collecting on YouTube but the whole not, time. They it's collect- not. It's the YouTube deal is not with YouTube. It's with some second some 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 other company. Yeah, some other shit, right? That's saying so, they gonna go get your money. Exactly. So what what happened is in in some most of the situations I'm assuming, niggas uh end up signing these deals and they be publishing deals. So when you do get that that, that hot one hundred hit or that top forty on radio hit and these publishing companies coming out to you trying to sign a the deal, they like, Whoa, you signed with da 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 da, you know what I'm saying? And two years ago and you like no, I didn't. They were just collecting on my YouTube whole time. They didn't fuck you out a couple thousand. You know what I'm saying? You just signed for a couple thousand dollars, and they didn't fuck you out your potential half a million dollar advance, a million dollar, two million dollar advance for this hit song you got now. Mm-hmm. So now you asked out the publishers like we can't fuck with you. You right. sign with you sign with Ronnie. You sign with sign with Ronnie Reebok. Yeah. Uh, mm. Production companies, <laughs> we ain't right. fucking with you. So, so the, back so, alley productions. Uh, so it's like you know to make sure you ain't just signing these any type of deals, and and when it when it when the time do come, you know, make sure you do a, a decent deal. If you in a, a position where you can do an admin and still get a bag, do the admin deal. And what if is an admin deal for people that don't? All right, know? so an admin deal is basically a deal like a publishing deal. You know, they collect on your music and shit you. Produced on or wrote on whatever you done done, and they collect worldwide depending on the company. But uh, the admin is basically the same thing. It's just they don't own your shit. But it, you know, and, and and the reason I'm saying but is because some people the the situation might be to work an admin deal over a publishing deal, but some situations it might be work a publishing deal over admin deal. You know, me, I just was in a situation where I was blessed enough to. You know, get a, a good enough deal with admin, but you know, just say if I if I was in a situation, I was going to graduate college. Perfect scenario. I was going to graduate college. I got my a uh, decent hit song where I wasn't able to get enough. I probably would have did a publishing deal so I can get my folks right, get this shit situated, pay off my student loans. You know what I'm saying? If the situation went right, but you know, some niggas might be put in a situation where. They 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 can cash out on the on the bag bigger a bigger bag up front doing pub and that might be best for you at the time but me personally I did add me all right now if somebody make a make a beat right you make a beat they're going to artist a nice artist right what do he got to do for that shit to be like a hit like how many streams is a hit like you know how how many streams you got to get off of one song and be like yo that's a hit I mean it's different when when you when you think about like. Um, what platform is on? You know, a song can go crazy on TikTok, right? And it's like to to the to the kids is a hit. To the young niggas and shit out there, they probably be like, uh, they trying to tell they they big sisters and brothers and they mums and daddies about a song, and you like, what the fuck is this shit, right? Mm-hmm. But when it when it get to a certain, I guess a certain amount of streams or whatever videos or whatever, and it start catching on, then it start, you know, flourishing into other platforms and shit. I look at it like. When it hits, when it hits the radio, that that's what makes a song a hit. You know, when it oh, hits that, top forty. Well, a lot of songs ain't hits then, because a lot of songs don't hit that motherfucking radio. Mm-mm. I see, I see a lot of songs come out and they be on. You know, you get on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, right. but that radio is a different game. Yeah, that radio, because because in a sense, radio is is replay value. Mm-hmm. When you thinking about songs, bro, and you thinking about a hit, you gotta you gotta understand that a song can be hot. For two weeks, bro. Literally, that's how this shit go now. A song could be hot for two weeks, mm-hmm. ten million streams, right? Mm-hmm. Then you probably that shit probably pl- like down there drop to down there a couple hundred thousand after that. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But when the song is on the radio, bro, and it's going it's crazy, hot. it's, it's hot high, for real. It's getting replayed mo- mo- consistently, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's beyond just us hearing it. We in the music industry. That's mm-hmm. nigga, our little cousins, mm-hmm. your little sister, y'all kids. You mm-hmm. feel me? You know, like. Motherfucker, your grandma hearing the song on the radio, mm-hmm. and it's and it's it's constantly playing. Every time they get in the car, they hearing this shit. 
you know, they they looking at it like, oh, what's this song? Maybe mm-hmm. I need to go download it. Yeah. Yeah. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Roman Swipes. Listen, <laughs> I'm talking to you right now. You keep coming up short in the game. She's looking at you different. And listen, she's losing respect for you because you can't deliver. You know why you can't deliver? Because you can't last long. You can't stay strong. Listen, you're, you, you know what? You're really a bench warmer. But you got in the game. And as soon as you got in the game, you fumbled. You fumbled the first time the ball hit. You fumbled. You dropped the ball. You was only in the game for 10 seconds. And you back out of the game. You know why? She's looking at you like, oh, my God, this guy. I thought he was an MVP. He told me he was an all-star. He told me he was going to score this many points. You can't score. You know why? You keep coming up short. That's why you need to go ahead and get some Roman swipes. Well, you ain't got no Roman swipes. What are you waiting for, huh? What are you waiting for? You need to get some Roman swipes. And right now, you get 20% off. You need to go to GetRoman.com slash game. Get 20% off, and you'll be in the game. Think about that. GetRoman.com slash game. Get 20% off, and you'll be in the game. Roman swipes. Stop playing. And you know what's crazy? I just want to say, I want all everybody to pay attention to that, especially the artists. He said the radio. Because a lot of people, say, they think the radio was dead. Fuck no, that's where niggas get money. That's where you going that's where you gonna eat. A producer, that's where you gonna win your money. You're not getting like so, so let me break this down. Me being a producer, coming in in a music industry, I got my first hit like 2017, you know what I'm saying? End of 2017, I'm almost five years in. I've only seen publishing money. I've never seen a dime on the record side releasing music. You know what I'm saying? I never released a song. So if you're a producer, you're thinking like, damn, you know, you wanna you wanna record whatever, drop music, that's cool. You know, you you doing tune core and you know, yeah. whatever United Masters, that's cool. You know, you getting you getting some money. That's on the record side, you getting money. But like a producer like me who wanna who wanted to um release big records, you know, I'm just not getting to that point in my career. You feel me? Just even just with the artists and the paperwork and all this shit. So I've only seen money on the publishing side and the the way you get money with publishing is through radio through you know what i'm saying your shit going top top 20 top 30 40 whatever the fuck you know what i'm saying the song go that's how you getting paid out this shit so 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 at the end of the day once again radio is not dead it's not the reality is fuck what they said fuck what they said radio ain't dead start tapping into these radios try to get the song on the radio so you get them spins and you get that playback value like he's talking about because you said something that's very important. You said a song will be the shit for two, three weeks. Man, I swear to God. And then that bitch it. Yeah. yeah. A plane that just landed in the Hudson River. And if it don't touch it, if in them two, three weeks it don't push over to hit that radio, yeah. it's done. Oh, it's done for. But yeah, a lot of songs ain't hit no radio. A lot of niggas hold songs on the album, none of the songs drop and hit that fucking radio. I'm seeing albums last for two weeks and they gone. And ain't, and ain't nobody playing nigga shit. So, so, so the whole thing is this. Like you said, the key is to get it on the radio. Now, I never knew that you don't get no money from publishing off the record, like going through the stream shit and all that. No, nah, you do, you do, but you where you going to get the bag is the radio. radio. You're going to get some money off this shit. It's just not going to be what you think. You know what I'm saying? But like I, I was, I was saying more about me personally releasing a record. You know, just okay. me on the record side releasing the record. Like I haven't made no money because I never released a record. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I only been making basically publishing money, and of course, like through the publishing, uh, they collect on some streaming and all this shit. But the radio is where a nigga really. You know what I'm saying? If I make a hit, like that's cool. But if I make one of them joints that I hear on the radio consistently, that paper is different. It's different. You got you did a bring truck backing up, bro. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> it's he don't want to brag, but then right. I ain't gonna brag. This shit nah, nah, I ain't gonna brag. It's shit. different. I pay a lot of taxes. This shit, yo, shit. nigga, shit. Oh my god, I don't even want to hear about tax. That shit, man. Them taxes. Don't that you know? Shit. You know what's crazy, Tay? When your accountant tell you, and you like. This that this that 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 hundreds that I'm talking about that 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 hundreds and hundreds of thousands taxes close to a million dollar tax talk we having right now. 
Yeah. When they sending that money over and you get in your bank and go over, they 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 ate oh, they man. transferred so over and you that see that shit, shit deducted out your account, you like, damn. They just took that shit out of mine yesterday, man. Leave me alone. So just go change the fucking subject. Yeah, them taxes is rough, man. I don't even I just don't I me, I just ain't never been robbed by a nigga with no gun, man. Mm-hmm. I don't even know no nigga named Sam, man. You just passing and then, all that and money. Nigga over. Just, the nigga just robbed me like that, man. But you know what? Tim? I just passed all that motherfucking beef bacon over. That shit different. It's but crazy. it's good you could pay Tay because a lot of artists, by the time, you know, I, I ain't had, gotta pay no taxes. No, no. A lot of artists, by the time, <laughs> listen, by the time they come and because realize they, and no they tap into their taxes, they ain't got no money to pay them. Yeah. The money done ran out. I was just talking to somebody like, nigga, sign a deal for a million dollars, right? <laughs> you sign a, a deal for a million dollars, you gotta pay. Four hundred. You got no, no, no. Before that, nigga, you got to pay your lawyer. You got to mm. pay your manager. Mm-hmm. Nigga, that's the mm-hmm. twenty to twenty five percent, right? Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, and when you when you think about it, shit, you got what eight hundred mm. after that. You got to pay another forty percent. Mm. You done? You done? You can't get mama that house. You can't go get that Lambo. You can't go. You got to take that. And you got to focus on creating your music. No, they still go get that house in that land. Yeah, yeah, niggas do that, but you be fucked up. (laughs) You be fucked up. You better have good credit so you can go in. You know what I mean? mean, Get the nice condo. I'm going to tell you what I did, bro. Go ahead, give us a game. I got, got, when I I graduated, I paid out my student loans, bro. It was like 24,000. I looked at it as an investment because my credit was fucked up. I had money and couldn't get, I couldn't get a hell kit. Mm-hmm. I had I had money I had a chick but couldn't get a haircut so I was like man I gotta fi- I gotta fix my credit so I ended up um paying all my student loans and like the next week my shit had jumped like a hundred some points my credit score you feel me so then I kind of knew the importance of credit because I'm like damn you know my student loans had been building the past four years I wasn't paying that shit that shit was kind of just stacking up you know what I'm saying drawing interest out of that type of shit so. When I did that, it kind of like showed me the importance of this shit. So ever yeah, since then, I've been building it, feel me, buying, buying property, all that type building of shit. Building that shit up. Yeah, yeah, you got to. Don't that, be no fool. But 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 it's it, it's smart that you you was able to take your money and add value to yourself with your money. But you can save like you get the million. You got to break down the lawyer, the taxes. You yeah. can walk away with four, five, three, four, whatever. You still can create because that's when you go into create mode now. Because now you first learning the game. Most niggas blow their money off when they first get that bag. Right. Which is, you know, it's a celebration of coming up out of the struggle. Well, yeah, you gonna, you gonna, because I fuck someone yeah, up. He, 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 he wants to sit over here and tell us to get shit out to nah, pay nah, my nah, student loans. I'm gonna tell you, though. I'm gonna tell you what I did. All them bitches at Howard University, you bought pocketbooks for and shit. Old school nigga, he was by. I'm gonna tell you the first thing I did, I bought me I bought me a chain. I spent like ten thousand on the chain. Uh huh. And then yeah, I bought that, me a roller. There you go. Come on, I bought keep me it a real. roller. I went to wifey. I spent I spent like yeah, I, I went to wifey, I spent like thirty. You know what I'm saying? Like You went to where? Wifey. Wifey. In Atlanta. Yeah, wifey. I went to wifey, spent like thirty. I bought me a I bought me a um I ended up getting a, a scat pack. I can't get the hair cat. Got the scat pack. Mm. What's the difference between a scat pack and a hell pack? Spent another what, what's the, dub what's the, on his piece. So, no, I I'm into that shit, bro. That's my shit right there. <laughs> so the scat pack. So the scat pack is is basically like it's the same shit, but it's not a supercharged. It's a Hemi. It's the the bigger Hemi actually, and it's and it's it's six it's six point four liter. You know what I'm saying? And actually, the Hellcat is six point two liter, but it's supercharged. You feel me? So so what you got now? I got a track hawk. Oh yeah. Got a track hawk, which yeah. is a is a Hellcat yeah. Jeep. You ain't got the scat pack. Nah, hell no. Yeah. Nah, nah, yeah, yeah. Don't try to hype the scat pack. Nah, up. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to get it. They grind you the I fuck up. God. You got a scat pack. Nigga, yeah, I, I get a scat that. pack today. I love I miss my scat. You don't miss I, got, I got to a Rick. And nigga hit me on the E-Way. Nigga was going like a honey. I'm on You don't miss that scat without the turbo in there, man. Regular ass engine in that joint. It, it ain't regular, though. That was crazy. That that that, now your shit got the Lion King all over. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you funny. You know, you they funny grind this because in Philly they grind scat packs the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, I heard him say that. That's why I was asking. Yes, they, they, they do. Nigga, you got a scat pack. Nigga, shut up. You ain't this. I ain't like, yeah, I didn't know. Hey, listen, I but didn't even know what it was. But he said it's still a good car. Nah, in Memphis, niggas, niggas love skates. That's what niggas own is in Memphis. Skate oh, packs. Oh, Philly, like, I heard a nigga grind a nigga up because he had a skate. Yeah, I ain't know what the fuck. <laughs> nah, I didn't even know. It. Listen, I didn't even know what the fucking scat yeah. pack was. I just heard the rapper telling another nigga, "You got a scat pack, nigga." I'm like. All right, cool. Sounded a little funny. You know, I don't know what the fuck a scat pack is. I guess it's a motherfucker fucked up car or something. But you telling me that is 
is a hood savior. Swear to God. Oh, he's seeing that shit. How many cars you got now? Shit, like four. What mm. you got? See, I got, I, uh, I got a Lexus. Oh, you got a Lexus? Yeah, I got no, no, no. I got, I got, I, I got the track hawk. That my, that my everyday car. I love my track hawk. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a Jeep. So niggas looking at the Jeep like, if you don't know it's a track car, you're going to look at it like, that's a regular car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a $100,000 car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's being too, like, leather seat, suede, uh, panoramic roof, mm-hmm. all this shit. Like, it's, it's fully loaded, you know. Mm-hmm. And niggas look at it like, from the outside. Nigga. Yeah, that type of shit. Yeah, nigga, nigga, nigga from the outside look at it like, ah, this is, that's a, that's a, that's a Jeep. Uh, mm-hmm. Grand Cherokee, but yeah. it's really a track car. That's my everyday car, though. Yeah. Then I got the the vet, the new vet. Oh yeah, I'm oh, very cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just souped it up, did everything to it. I I bought it for like one twenty. Just put like probably like ten thousand in it, something like. You got a monster. Yeah. That motherfucker nice though. I got I got to trade it in. Now to get the ZL six joint. Cause that, I gotta get that supercharged. What else you got? Oh man, I got the G wagon too. Okay, I got the G wagon. That's 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 like the the little flex LA vibe type car. Oh, okay, look at you know, it. What y'all what y'all got though? What, what we need to find out? What y'all he got ride? some shit. What he, you got? What you he, got? I seen, I seen I seen the Beamer keys. No, no, no I, I seen got, a, I, I seen, no, a, I got, I seen got, a little Beamer. Yeah, what you, you got? I no, I uh, got the I got the see. I'm more old school shit. I'm old school, yeah. Okay. You know I mean, so I just okay. got the the 750. My wife got the X yeah. truck. The, you know yeah. what I mean? But then I got a a 1941 Ford business coupe. I got a uh, that old shit. Nice a shit, yeah. 19 a custom 1989. Ooh, you got a 19. You got a crazy you Chevy see? with a 65 Chevy back on that. Motherfucker. When they see that shit, Ooh, I got a 1974 Stingray. Ah, right, that's hard. hard. Yeah, he got some uh, shit. Got some he shit. got some shit. Wilder got, got, got three Benzes. No, man. I just got, I got like the, uh, I got a uh, 1991 560 white Benz coupe. Like the, uh, you know. Fuck, Dope you know. boy special. I got a uh, 1993 300E with the BBSs on there. I got a. 2021. 63 GT 63 GT yeah I got a GLE motherf- that motherfucker fast I love my GLE that motherfucker <laughs> she get out of here kill shit I got a uh, cop car yeah I got a cop car a, a cop a cop car yeah, <laughs> yeah, he a rat. He a rat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry to tell you to do this. It's a black a and white. Where it's a black and white. Where they ain't got the <laughs> sirens on top. But when <laughs> yes. you see it, you gonna be you got the mirror. You see like oh cops coming. <laughs> you gonna get up out of here. You gonna just join. I got He's that. He's a rat. Yeah, he I got a, I got a motherfucking. I got a. I got a. Uh, two He'll know how to take that shit. He like, he like oh that nigga working with the pool. Hey, listen, I got a 2010 Dodge. This is one of my favorite yeah. dudes. A Dodge gray minivan, right? This motherfucker's everything, right? <laughs> I got a 2010 Prius, Toyota mm. Prius. This motherfucker cool. You know, I'm gonna run it down. Twenty-seven dollars. You could ride to New York and back. That's I'm talking on a half a tank of gas. This motherfucker, you fill a whole joint up for twenty-seven. I used to run it back and forth from New York on a half a tank. That's an hour, what, forty minutes? Mm. Hour forty minutes from Philly. I used to. <laughs> I want to have a tank. This motherfucker was fast. You didn't even hear this bitch. That's crazy. I'm talking about, it was, I'm talking about, and it'd be like, phew. I'm talking about this shit was like. He hyping up a fucking Prius, man. Shut yeah. up with the dumb ass shit. Hey, hey, look, check this out. Y'all know I ain't never really just been up here. Like, this is my first time in Philly. I did not know New York was that fucking close, bro. Yo, you know yeah. who said that? that? Shit, I New think York, I bro. think two chain says and he said, "Yo, Jersey." Right? I said, "Yo, Jersey, right there, man." <laughs> like, like you gotta understand, this is probably the only place in America where it's though you get hit. Four cities in three hours. You got mm. New York, then you got all Jersey. You got like Trenton, Jersey City, whatever. Mm. Then you come down to Philly. Then you got Baltimore. Then you got DC in like a three hour. It's crazy. Three, four, yeah, it's right. Yeah, New York right there. New York is. Man, crazy. I looked at this shit. I said, damn, this shit dead close. Yeah, New York. No, we look at this twenty shit. minutes, man. Well, I don't know how the fuck we look at this shit, but this yeah. shit there, we, I ain't never put it together in context like that. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, I'm talking about is it, is all like all these cities right here, like. I shit a motherfucker hour and 20 minutes away from where we at right now. Yeah, it's just like that. But listen, man. You got the record out, man. You got the record out. You got more coming. Uh, You got bigger beats coming. Who you want to do, you know, produce for that you haven't yet? 
Man, I got to produce for Jay-Z. Mm. I got to. Hove H to the OV. That's, that's one of the main goals right now where I'm in my career. Just like, it's like the, the, the level of me admiring him is, is different now. Since I'm older, I can understand more. But it's like that nigga... Going through the same shit I was going through when it came to when it came to like the situations with like the labels and you know just understanding more of how that shit go now. It's like I respect him more. I want to work with him. I want to get in with him. I want to do some shit with him for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the only person. No, no, no. That's just like the person on my on my bucket list. But you now you got uh, Post Malone. Mm. Okay. You know, Post, make it happen. Hey Sherry, call Hove. Tell him uh, hook him up. Who else? Uh, she y'all names some niggas. Let me see if I if I want Andre uh, three thousand. Yeah, that's and the, you know, uh, bro was putting in the play for that. But hell yeah, that's the legend. You know for sure. For Did sure. you do the baby? I ain't work with the baby yet. I had made a pack for him, but shit, that had to be what about, about Kevin Gates. Yeah, I got some shit. Kevin Gates gave me a single. He gave me a song. Uh, the song, the song he gave me. It was, it was it's a hard a hard ass song though. Yeah, I fuck with Gates. Gates a real nigga. Like, and we just we um, another thing when we was uh, since you brought it up, we was in the studio with him, and you know we just got to talking, bro. And it just like the nigga, I, I had you just on some whole other shit. You feel me? You just right. like damn, nigga had to think like damn, I forgot I'm in the studio. I didn't talk to Kim Gates four hours. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Real yeah. But who who else? Who else you who you who you think? I of? mean, you know, I just like to you know, I just like to see the hot young niggas work with the hot young niggas. Yeah, bro. and it, and it, and it's a thing too. Like I want to I want to touch back on, bro. Like if you're a producer, bro, you gotta fuck with the new wave. Like, and I'm gonna speak from a lower producer standpoint. What do you classify I, as the new wave? So the 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 new the upcoming artists who. Who's 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 like you know me? We looking deep in this shit. We looking at like shit. Is this nigga? Is this nigga doing decent on on YouTube? This nigga streaming well on 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 Spotify and Apple? Is it what's his following like? What's right. his like? You know what I'm saying? He ain't doing no bullshit fake ad likes. You know what I'm right. saying? We paying attention to this shit. So, um, and, uh, and then eventually we'll see like who fucking with him in his city or whatever. You know, just but your city got to be fucking with it. Got got to. I'm you don't sorry. think nobody could pop with all these cities? Bro, you can, but you ain't going to stay. You feel me? Because if right. you got your city support, you got that core fan base. Right. These folks who know you, bro, like these folks who yep. you grew up with and shit, like these your people. And then you like you just blow up out of nowhere and your city don't, your city just know you from a fucking TikTok song. like or Oh, yeah, I think they know. is from Philly. Yeah. Yeah, shit what like part? that. And then guess, Uptown, they guess lying what? and shit. Guess what? When a nigga do shit like that, bro, a nigga would then not fuck with your shit no more. Like, oh, damn, I thought he was... You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Nigga might ain't even listen to your shit no more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because niggas like, damn, I thought he was the shit in that yeah, shit. Yeah, type shit, talk. exactly. So shit. so so damn, that's deep. That's so yeah, shit. I was I was finna say like from a lower uh producer standpoint, when you when you when you working with the upcoming artists, that will get your leverage and build your leverage where you will be able to work with bigger artists. Because if you trendy with a with a um with an artist who coming up, you know shit, that's kinda like a formula. She keeping your chop. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit, me and Block Boy, mm -hmm. 21 in, in uh, Metro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The list goes on. But that's like a like a, a way for you to be able to get your foot in the door and niggas will fuck with you. You know, and for the, the bigger producers like me and, me and myself, like, when you working with the young niggas, that's what keeping you relevant. You know what I'm saying? When you when you a big producer, every, everybody know a big producer coming to the game is only, like, Ten of, these, 10 of these niggas who come in and have a big moment. But guess what? When that moment over, bro, you got to realize, like, all right, how I'm going to stay relevant, how I'm going to keep niggas fucking with me. Me specifically, I feel like if I fucking with the young niggas on, on like, the, the, the street shit, the young niggas who really turning up out here, that's what keep a nigga, like, in the mix, in the, you know what I'm saying, where niggas fuck with a nigga, then it's like I'm blessing these niggas with hits. I'm fucking with them. I'm turning them up. It ain't like I'm just, like, I'm some shit like, hey, bro, here go a beat. I'm actually pulling up to the studio with these niggas. I'm working with these niggas. Like, we, shit, when Shiesty been locked up, well, how long Shiesty been locked up? A close year. Close a year. About a year type shit, bro. I've been putting money on bro books. I ain't talked to him. I ain't had a chance to talk to him. But I, I check in with his pops all the time. You feel me? Like, uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I really fuck with him, you know, and I fuck with the, the whole shit or whatever we had going when we first got in the mirrors, when he first got in the mirrors, bro. But it's like, 
when when you a big producer, when you considering fucking with the young niggas and the new wave, you can't just be on no vulture shit. Basically, you gotta fuck with these niggas, and that's what it's about, man. Real just fucking with them, man. Shit, and, uh, and it's like uh, uh, I was thinking about making beats. Uh, you got any tips for me? Like I'm gonna start. <laughs> no, nigga, you no, I'm not saying I'm gonna make beats too. Like fuck, man. Nah, man, I, I, I use FL I Studio, bro. Shit. Huh? I use FL Studio. What's that? That's that's the program. You, and you use that on the MacBook? Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't fucking nobody know that, man. Yeah, except you, for your stupid ass, man. Hey, listen, you got the record beats. out though with Gunner and Lil Dirk. Go check that out, man. Lights out. Lights out. Go Lights stream out, man. that. It's... Go buy that. Download it. TikTok it. Instagram it. Repost on Twitter. Yeah, I mean, get that shit, on the get that shit to the radio. You hear yeah, me? I'm putting my hey. own bag behind this shit too, right. bro. I'm putting how my much own. Bag, what type of bag do you need to put behind a record for real? Like, how much your motherfucker need to put behind it? Because we heard different things. It, different. De- it depends, but you could put a fifty, you could put a twenty, Ooh. put a ten. You know what I'm saying? It just depend, but depends, but that's, that's, that's the go. thing, bro. Niggas don't put niggas don't be want to put their money into their own music, bro. How you mm. how you uh, you will invest in you will go invest in a hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry that's to what be they icy. Think, they think and clothes, that's, but hold, tell you, they think that's putting into the music. They think. The market, that part is going to make people fuck with but it. it like do, everybody got it do. In a small portion, it do. It helps because it's the image. And the image now, because of social media, is very important, right? But when it comes to, like, the music and the, the business behind this shit, bro, if you ain't, if you, if you getting, if you getting 80,000, 100,000 for a show, right? And you, and you hire, you feel me? And you thinking, like, the labor got all this shit, bro, you still need to be in the business with this. You need to know what the fuck going on. Cause for one, you getting fucked. Cause you signing a, 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 a ordinary artist deal and you getting a smaller percentage of your music, right? I mean, your, or your money, right? For, for your music. But you gotta understand that if the label getting the, and the label and whoever they paying getting a bigger percentage of this shit right you gotta understand where the fuck that money going and how it's being used so you gotta be hands on bro if I'm if I'm if I'm um, basically in a situation where I got a song and I wanna release the song or whatever I wanna send it to radio I wanna do the market all this shit right it might be a hundred thousand dollars in the label budget and you and you break it down you say oh this going here that's going here that's going here you might meet Particularly, you might want to go in a situation where, I right, look, I'm going to put my own extra little money so I can push it this way. I can do that. I can do that. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's that's how you do it, bro. If you getting that money, you ain't you ain't doing shit with it. You fucking it off. You feel me? You going to buy cars, you're out of shit. We all do it. That's cool. But you also got to understand you got to put the money behind the music, too. That's what, that's what got you paid in the first place. That's what it's all about, man. You know, you hitting the game rolling, down, you know, from Tay Keith, man. Uh, I think I'll be here soon giving y'all game on these beats because I'm going to start making beats after this show. Shut up. And, uh, no. What? Man, getting all that fucking money. I want to get some. Listen, though, we appreciate you for coming through. Uh, I appreciate y'all, man. Sitting on this motherfucking love, couch. Man. Me and I was worth a game, game man. man. You hear me? Each and every week giving y'all the best of the best because that's what we doing. It's just like that. Right.